Hello guys, it's Dr. Brian. Um, welcome back. This we, we just finished up a workshop last night. So what I want to do is I want to review specifically for the people who couldn't come. So first off, praise be Jesus Christ, right? He gave us this body. He gave us this temple. Um, we shared a little bit last night about we are a body, soul, unity. Um, never forget that. So regardless of where you're on your journey, maybe you're struggling with something in life. Maybe you're, um, you, you think your weakness is is a burden that it's um, overbearing on people like that's not true like God remember he greater is he who is in you than who is in the world all right so just remember that because in time of suffering I know it could be really difficult it's not easy at times um, but my hope and my goal is, is to be able to share with you guys some knowledge a little wisdom that I have <coughs> excuse me um, about taking care of our bodies and taking care of our temples at the best ability that we can for the glory of God, right? Um, so what I want you to, what, I, what I'm going to review today for a lot of people that didn't come to the workshop was, um, you know, number one, you can't have a healthy gut without a healthy microflora or bacteria. Most people don't realize that, like, you know, all bacteria isn't the same, right? Like E. coli is not good. Salmonella, not good. But there's actually good microorganisms or good bacteria and bugs that are beneficial to your overall health. I mean, literally, they're showing that if you have the proper balance of healthy bugs, that it can help you to prevent cancer, to prevent diabetes, to prevent weight gain. Um, uh, a lot of digestive issues, IBS, col colitis, Crohn's disease, or at least help you if you have those things maybe reduce your symptoms some. So literally this gut is so important. And, and just to think how God made us, right? Like 75 to 100 trillion cells. Like my eyes are cells, my heart cells, my skin is cells, right? And these cells are clumped together and they become tissues and tissues come together to become organs. Organs come together to, become, to make organ systems. And then those systems come together to make organism, an organism, which is the human body right this physical body so um you have to realize that like you're 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 all cells that amazing amazing wonderful cells of the body but you know you have 10 times the amount of microorganisms or bacteria in your gut than you do cells so there's something to say about that and in my handout if you guys want this let me know email send me your email and i'll send that to you but you have to realize that you're 10% human cells, 90% microorganisms, which are bugs. Remember, all bugs aren't created equal. You have bad bugs. See, he's unhappy here. And then you have good bugs, happy bugs. And these bugs play a huge role in your overall health. But there's something to say about having more bugs in your body, microorganisms, than you do cells. Um, if you had a five-gallon bucket, you literally might could possibly fill that entire bucket up with microorganisms versus your cells. That's a lot. And what they're finding out, and this was an interesting, is when they did the Human Genome Project, this study of our DNA and our genes, they thought they were basing it on the complexity, that human beings are extremely complex. Therefore, they're going to have lots of genes. And they were predicting around 100,000 or more, right? Well, they found out once they did the entire Human Genome Project, it stunned scientists it stunned so many people um there was twenty four thousand genes so they were off by seventy five thousand so that's crazy now this is interesting um but the rice plant actually has more genes than the human genome it had forty six thousand and this is interesting the microorganisms had a hundred thousand our microorganisms in our body have a hundred thousand genes so in each a microorganism there's a hundred thousand genes in there right so in each cell of the human person they had 24,000 genes so it's really not based on this complexity and I think that when you look at the microorganisms in the the their hundred thousand genes they're healthy when you're sick they get sick um, when you, they have a, a literally a circadian rhythm of life. So like when you sleep, they sleep. So, and again, this is not a new field. This is, uh, they're doing a lots and lots more and more research on the microorganisms and 
how these are affecting people's body and their health. But one thing I do know is they're essential. And when they're essential, that means that um, they, um, you don't, it's very difficult, let's say, to get them in our food and our diet today. So like a supplement's a good way to get them. There are fermented foods that you can do um, to get probiotics. But um, we're getting one millionth of the bacteria that our ancestors got. And our ancestors were extremely healthy people. So again, um, when, when you're stressed out, they, these microorganisms get stressed out. So think of it like an ecosystem, like everything has to sort of work together. There's a relationship and um, they're depending on each other. So your cells and the microorganisms, they're dependent on each other. So literally how you think, how you exercise and move, how you eat, and even your prayer life, all that can play a role on your overall health, but also play a role in, in your microorganisms because they work so hand in hand together. So let's move forward here. Um, this is just a cool fact here is some of the fastest growing cells of your body, cells are your, your nails, your skin, your hair, and also your, your gut, your gut. So like, remember this is a closed system, Right, so there's, there's, there's no openings. Once I put a piece of food in my mouth, the next place it comes out is when I go to the bathroom, right? Um, so when you take that food in, it gets into your stomach, they, you know, it starts breaking down, then you get into the small intestines, the beginning, and it starts to release digestive enzymes to break the food down more. But your small intestines is a really important area for microorganisms, good bacteria, and <clears throat> to keep junctions really tight, those cells tight. They want to be tight. You don't want to have a big gap or opening in those cells. That's where you, people see, you hear, I'm sure you guys maybe heard of what they call leaky gut. So um, as that food goes in, it's absorbed through those cells in the small intestines. That's where you absorb all your food. Um, and then it's, you know, the rest of it's pushed out through the large and then you spell it out in the toilet, right? Um, so it's just to realize like that's a closed system. Um, your, your gut is a huge place where that nutrients are absorbed through. So we want to make sure we're getting proper nutrients to be broken down, proteins and carbs and fats are like being emulsified and, and broken down and absorbed properly. And the thing that helps, it, uh, uh, some, one, one thing that it really benefits the proper digestion, breakdown, absorption of your nutrients, helping to keep those cells healthy, help nourishing those cells to feed those smell, those cells in that small intestines is your, the bacteria. Good bacteria, healthy bacteria, a pro, probiotic, right? Pro meaning for life, right? We're pro-life. Um, biotic means organism, right? Or life or living. So like pro-life, probiotics, right? So it's a remember it's a relationship of when you eat healthy they eat healthy so this is always going to go back down to like food and diet and stressors guys that's that's what everything goes back down to like it's not about taking a bunch of supplements it's not about um taking a bunch of medications it's really about stepping back reflect a little bit how do i eat am i pure and sufficient how do i eat am i pure and sufficient how i move am i pure and sufficient in my prayer um, these all have to be done at the same time for a period of time in order to see, achieve and start seeing health, okay? So what can cause a depletion of these, these bacteria, right? These good bacteria. Well, C-sections. C-sections are, um, over 50% of babies are C-section today. Um, if you have to have that done, totally get it. You got to do it, right? But what I'm saying is it's called eco-immunonutrition. Like the, the birth through the vaginal canal um, in is is important and the reason why is because they're the baby's coated their skin are be coated with a bacteria from mom um, and that starts the healthy gut flora um, transitioning into the more mature when they're around two or three the gut flora but that's important that's really important to, that we have that and you can read on it's called eco immunonutrition um, breastfeeding is another way I was telling a group last night, like, you know, antibodies. A baby doesn't have an immune system. So where does his immune system come from? The mom's breast milk. So mom will literally, that breast milk is liquid gold. It, mom's milk will literally make the proper antibodies that that baby needs at that minute or time or given moment. Like, it's amazing. So God designed it that way. And the interesting thing is you actually have a leaky gut when you are a baby. 
and when I mean leaky, that means in your small intestine, the cells should be nice and tight when we're older. But when you're young, they open up. And when they open up, that's good because the food that's in here gets down through the cells. That's what it's supposed to do. And, and, and those immunoglobulins from mom's breast milk are big. And so they have to, it has to, the baby has to have an open gut, a leaky gut. So that immunoglobin could fit through here and it gets into the bloodstream and then it, it, it's the immune system for the babies. But once you get older, after a few years, two or three years, then um, in the after six months, the baby should start to close up. That's when your immune system starts to develop and grow. Um, so again, breastfeeding, awesome. But if you aren't breastfeeding, you could be depleted in a good healthy microbiome or bacteria. Antibiotics, remember, you're killing the bacteria. Again, I'm not saying you never need an antibiotic. I'm saying if you've been on one, you should be doing a probiotic or eating some fermented foods. Alcohol destroys uh, bacteria. Pesticides and herbicides, insecticides, that's why if you can eat local and organic, that's gonna be your best source. But sometimes we can't afford it and it's not always easy to get local food. I'm, we live in Nebraska, so you're gonna only get it maybe four months out of the year, five months maybe. But um, the pesticides and herbicides, um, is destroying actually how do you know healthy soil like a farmer a healthy soil has healthy bugs that's just a fact but when you're spraying all the chemicals and pesticides like i understand if you want to increase your yield but you're still destroying the the good bacteria in the in the soil how to replenish that i don't know i'm not a farmer but i'm just telling you guys what i know um chloride or chlorine in the water if you're drinking tap water it kills your bacteria Prescription drugs, any drugs that do immune modulating could affect <coughs> your probiotics um, in your gut. Artificial sweeteners, aspartame, um, equal, um, whatever, all these different ones out there, they all could destroy it. Remember, that stuff's not real food, right? Probiotic deficiency. Okay, handout. Um, okay, so let's just keep moving forward. I won't take too much. There's a lot to go over here. So th what's the benefits then of having a good, healthy microflora in a, in a gut? So again, digestion, absorption of your food, 70% of your immune system is in your gut. So huge, big, big benefit. If you're someone who gets frequent colds or flu, um, you, m something that might want to help is increasing your probiotics. Um, it helps with decreasing constipation. Um, it makes a lot of serotonin, so it's going to help your moods. Um, so anxiety and depression, things like that, it could help. It helps to keep your blood sugar in control, reducing obviously the risk of diabetes. Diabetes leads to the heart disease. You see how this stuff starts snowballing. It just goes on and on and on. So really when it comes back down to when you're eating healthy and clean and you're balancing your stressors in life, you start to see transformation. Healthy joints, it keeps gut inflammation down. It's also going to help you with joint pain. So if your inflammation's down in the gut, that it'll help those joints. Um, also, it helps to make B vitamins, B12 for energy, red blood cells, vitamin K, um, glutathione. Glutathione is a strong antioxidant. So all these things are being made when you have a healthy gut microbiome if you're eating the right foods. Um, short chain fatty acids, butyrate is a huge one. Um, you could look a ton, there's a ton of research online with how these, basically what happens is if you're eating a high fiber diet, lots of fruits and vegetables, um, or oat brand or walnuts, you get a lot of fiber. The bacteria eat the fiber and then it ferments it and makes these things called short chain fatty acids. And those are like huge benefits for helping to reduce inflammation. So you reduce, again, it just goes on. You see, inflammation is the root of it. So if you decrease inflammation, you don't have so much joint pain, fibromyalgia, um, your, uh, you could reduce diabetes, you reduce heart disease, you reduce cancers. There's lots of research out there showing that. Um, we also have, uh, so IB, IBS, um, uh, colitis, they found that it could be beneficial for Crohn's disease, gas, indigestion, kids. When I see little kids, I always start them on a health, good uh, probiotic. Um, a company I use, I have my store if you guys ever want to go online and look at it, but Metagenics I use for the kids. Um, they have a nice line of supplements for kids that I always get the moms to start with the probiotic there. And then, um, You'd be amazing with the adjustment in that, how it helps so much with um, like colicky babies or gassy and bloating babies or their um, 
constantly just just um, maybe constipated or not pooping. Okay, um, this is cool. And candida, a lot of people have overgrowth and candida, fungal overgrowth. The benefit is when you have five times the amount of good bacteria versus bad, then you also um, reduce the chance of having an overgrowth of fungus, which is candida. Um, a lot of people have that. Candida it loves sugar. Bad bacteria, um, fungus, yeast, they love sugar. These guys, the bad ones. That's why when you start reducing in like sugar, um, processed foods, you know, just look at our foods. If it's if it if it rots right in a few days, it's probably real food. Like apples and things like that rot. Um, if it's not rotting, like you look at French fries, it could you'll find it in the cushion of a car that's been there for a year and a half, you pull it out and it's still a french fry. There's no mold on it, nothing in it. That's a little weird. Um, so it's probably not real food, right? Dandruff's another one. You get a lot of dandruff, you could have, um, that's a benefit of having good healthy bacteria as well. Okay, so improving. So what can you guys do to improve um, good healthy gut bacteria? So like um, kefir. Uh, if you're not if you're if you're okay with dairy and you can do dairy if, i always recommend doing like you know you could find farmers today where you can pick up um um unpasteurized raw milk you could do that and you could use kefir grains to uh, ferment that you know that's what they make with yogurt you know yogurt's okay guys but if like dairy there's not too much thing because when you start to pasteurize like commercial yogurt and stuff like that when stuff's pasteurized like i understand it we have to do that for it's the safety of the uh, the people, but you're destroying, it's high temperature, which destroys a lot of the bacteria that's already in it, the beneficial bacteria. Plus it's highly acidic, usually dairy is. And I'll be honest, when I eat dairy, I never feel as good. Um, so I'm not a huge fan of like raw milk. I don't think it's the, the worst thing you can do, but if, if you can do raw milk or organic whole milk, it's probably your better option to do that. So, um, you could do kefir water, like out of coconut water. That's really cool. Um, and again, if you just Google these things, you so many people out there, you can't go anywhere. There's so much information. You can find this stuff anywhere on YouTube. How to make kefir uh, coconut water. Really good stuff. Kombucha, you can buy that in stores. You can make it. You have to have your scoby mushroom though. Um, again, you could look it up. Um, kimchi, I'm not a fan of that. It's like fermented veggies. Um, pickles, I love pickles, I love sauerkraut. Sauerkraut's easy to ferment. You can make your own sauerkraut in the summer. Um, again, you could Google it, maybe I'll do a video on that, not sure. Uh, miso, olives, like fermented olives. I have to find those though. I haven't really found any fermented olives. I don't know, maybe olives are just fermented. Maybe, I don't know. Um, colorful fruits and vegetables, that's the key. I always tell people, keep this simple. God never made it difficult. Like, eat the rainbow, right? So eat all the different, like, colorful fruits and vegetables that you could eat. Obviously, if you want to lose weight, you want to watch your high sugar content fruits. All right, so watch that. Um, uh, people ask a lot of questions, too, like, what's a prebiotic? Prebiotics basically energy or food for the probiotics, the good bacteria. They eat it. Omega-3 fatty acids, fish oils, they love to eat that. Um, they love fiber. And again, when you eat fiber, that's when you're healthiest because you start to make the short chain fatty acids that have all the amazing benefits. Plus, when you eat a lot of fiber, let's be honest, we know that you reduce your cancer, colon cancer risk by like, I think, um, 50% or something like that. It's crazy if you're eating a high fiber diet. I mean, when I say high fiber, they recommend 25 to 30 grams. I think our hunter and gatherers, our ancestors ate anywhere from like, they like double that. So it was like 90 to 100 maybe grams of fiber a day, which is a lot. Um, walnuts, oats, polyphenols, dark chocolate. Balance yourself on that. Don't eat a ton of it, but you could have your dark chocolate 72% and up. Um, supplements now. Um, well, let me hit this real quick. So some prebiotics, like a lot of good stuff. Leeks, asparagus, um, onions. Um, if you're gluten-free, you gotta watch rye, but there's rye bread, um, fruits, vegetables, bananas, um, onions, again, asparagus, I said, apples have pectin, pectin's great, they love to eat that, um, beans, beans have a lot of fiber as well, again, balance yourself because some people get bloated or gassy when they eat a lot of beans, but sometimes if you're taking a lot of probiotics, like, just know that there is a thing called um, die-off syndrome, like if you have more bad bacteria than good and you start taking healthy bacteria, 
it's trying to colon colonize and, and trying to make community. So it's going to start pushing the bad out. So as the bad starts to die off, you could have symptoms like headache, maybe a little achiness, a little bit of like fluish, flu-like symptoms. That's normal, but keep it up. Like don't quit when you start taking those. So like I use, um, if you guys are interested in any, uh, just if you put your email on here, like I can give you, I could send you actually recommendations for supplement wise. What I like, um, I do have a company that I use. I use Metagenics, I use uh, in, Innate Choice. You want a multi-strain type of probiotic if you're going to buy it. Vegetarian, um, wheat, dairy, um, free, no additives, no preservatives. Um, you want something. It doesn't have to have a, a, a billion, like 50 billion. You don't need that. Most research has been done on anywhere, I think, from 10 to 30 billion around there. So if you can find something in that range, that's good. Liquid's okay. Um, I do capsules. Um, you don't need the enteric capsule. That's not need necessary. Um, some of it will die in your in your stomach. You have hydrochloric acid in there. That's why they give you billions and billions of probiotics. So when you take it in, some of it will probably die. I'm sure. Even when you get it shipped, um, like the company that I use, uh, it, it ain't choice probiotic sufficiency. It has um, they put 19 billion pro bacteria in there, good bacteria, but they're guaranteeing you 15. Right. So when you get it. Um, I keep it cool in my office, so I don't have them refrigerated here. But as soon as that seal is broken, refrigerate them, um, and you're gonna at least you're gonna be guaranteed 15 billion. So eat a lot of fiber, guys. Don't eat, I mean fiber is the key. Like the more fiber you eat, the more bacteria you have. The remember they work symbiotically. So when you eat healthy, they're healthy. These are gonna benefit you. Um, it's gonna help you in your journey of health. So praise God. If you have any questions, please comment. Um, and I hope you guys can come to the next workshop. Um, I'll be posting stuff. It'll be the end of July. Um, I haven't just decided what to do with it yet, which one I'm going to do or what I'm going to do it on. But if you can come, come. We have an awesome group of people that come, um, a great community. It's a good support, and it, it, it builds them up, <coughs> elevates them. And just remember that God is always there. God gives you what you need when you need it, right? But you got to put the work in. you got to put the effort in. So take care of the temples, this is Dr. Brian. God bless you guys, and I'm always praying for you.